four teams made multiple picks in the first round, beginning with the Texans at two and three. When the dust settles on Thursday night, the Lions, Seahawks, and Eagles, who apparently are, are intent on getting every single player that was on the Georgia defense, took two players apiece. All right, Lewis Riddick joins us now from Kansas City to talk about the night and the teams that had a chance to take multiple players. I'm going to start with the Lions. Now, they had an opportunity. They could have taken Bijan, but they trade out of their pick at six, and then they ultimately take a running back. Uh, Gibbs yeah. said he was shocked where he went, and they also <laughs> took a linebacker, and typically running backs and linebackers don't have a great track record in the first round. What do you make of what the Lions did with that draft capital? Look, man, they, they want, I'll tell you what, Dan Campbell, obviously, he has a plan as far as how he wants to use his backs. And, how, and what kind of football he wants to play. Look, he's already got DeAndre Swift. He already has David Montgomery. That's a good one-two punch right now. And you add Jameer Gibbs, who quite honestly is an Alvin Kamara type. He is a Marshall Falk type. Now, I know Marshall Falk's in the Hall of Fame. I get that, folks. <laughs> but Jameer Gibbs is the truth, Scott. He's the truth because of how he can run inside-outside. He's got that nice, smooth pick and slide where he can kind of start inside, jump it outside, turn the corner, and he's just breaking angles. And then the way he can catch the football out of the backfield and run routes. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. And then, you know what? When you move over to the defensive side of the football, like they need interior defensive line help. D interior defensive line help as far as stopping the run and helping Aiden Hutchinson with the pass rush. But they obviously didn't feel as though there was someone there that they felt matched up with the value there at 18. So they take Jack Campbell out of Iowa, who when you see him, if you've ever seen Jack Campbell up close, he looks like a small three technique at 6'5", 250 pounds. I mean, this guy is an absolute stud, and he's a downhill hammer as a Mike linebacker, a guy who at Iowa, they sent him on A and B gap blitzes all the time, which is one of the quickest ways to disrupt the interior run game is when you have a linebacker that big and you're sending them downhill on first and second down. And then on third down, you don't have to take him off the field. He's a guy who had five career interceptions at Iowa, who's got quick zone drop quickness, very good pattern recognition, good hands to finish with interceptions. So really, would you like to have, would I have liked to have seen them get a defensive tackle inside? Yeah, but you still okay. have on the second level a guy who's so big and so rangy that he's going to have a tangible, tangible impact on their run defense and their pass defense. Lewis, I'm on a text thread with a group of all my best friends, and somehow or another, it is almost exclusively NFC East based. And we have a couple yeah. of very loud Eagles fans that are saying, look at us. And I'm looking at them going, you got to be kidding me. You get Carter <laughs> at nine, you get Smith at 30, and you add it to what you already have. Philadelphia feels like they're cheating. What do you make of what they were able to do? That's unbelievable. I mean, think about this now. I mean, they're the Philadelphia Bulldogs. That's who they are now. Yeah, right. And you, when, you're trying, when you're trying to build culture and you're trying to build a college-like atmosphere via the draft, which is what every team is trying to do, what better way to do it than to just go ahead and get all the defensive players off of the best defense in college football over the past two years and put them all in the same organization? Because now they're going to take ownership of the organization now. And when you think about Jalen Carter being combined with some of the defensive presence that they have on that team already in terms of Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, who can, like, develop him as a professional, teach him how to be a pro, teach him what the standard is and then you just go oh by the way at the 30th pick we're going to get your buddy we're going to get Nolan Smith who happens to be a sub 4-4 four, four edge rusher and we're going to let him go ahead and learn from Brandon Graham and Hassan Reddick and then we're going to put him with N'Kobe Dean and all you guys can just recreate the same thing you did as back-to-back -back two time national champions to me I mean that that's look sometimes the board has to fall your way and obviously you have to make the moves in order to put yourself in position to get these players but, man, if you're Philadelphia right now, you're going, we did work. We did some serious work on night one. As predicted, Lewis, we've reached the portion of our evening where we're screaming over the band. So I'll say thank you. I hope you can hear me and you know how much I appreciate you. Scott, you know what? I will say this right now. I can't hear a thing you're saying because right behind yep. me, chaos is breaking out, yep. my man. Good night. Bye-bye. So <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.